I know what you're thinking. He's doing a Q&A. Probably doesn't know what videos to film. Partly true, but not entirely. Also because the last video actually did relatively well. I say relatively well. I did a lot better than previous videos. Maybe people like me incorporating more of like the student training like balance side of things. What we're going to do is a Q&A. Shock, wow. We're going to talk about things that people ask me. You provide the questions. I will provide the answers. Or at least my answers. Not necessarily the right answers, just my answers. I feel like I need a hat. Got the questions next to me. I'm trying out some new audio method things. I bring the camera closer. Trying an external microphone in the form of my phone, whilst also using the actual microphone, the Rode mic on the camera to see which is better. Who knows, let's find out. Question one, not gonna read out names because some people didn't want me to, and it makes sense for me just to not read out any of them. So if you ask a question and I did answer it, you know who you are. If I didn't answer it, I'm sorry, drop me a DM and I'll answer it there. What strategies do you think will play a key role in combating mental health in the future? Good question. Ultimately, I think a lot of it's gonna come down to awareness, i.e. doing what people are currently doing, which is speaking about things more freely and more openly, understanding that there is clearly a problem, especially if you look at suicide rates and everything associated to mental health, be that extreme versions or extreme side of things and not so extreme side of things. There is obviously something going on there. So it's gonna be a question of familiarizing yourself and people with what the issues are, how they can be addressed and what may be causing it. Because I think that's gonna be a big thing that comes into it is what is causing this. In a lot of cases, depression and anxiety can be caused by a lack of purpose in life, i.e. doing a job you hate. I think they say that 87% of people don't actually like their job, which is quite a shocking statistic. And then you look at how high the depression rate in people who don't like their job is, pretty high. What are the fundamentals that need to be put in place for people to overcome mental health hindrances i.e finding something that provides them with the purpose that they require or they desire providing someone with the direction providing someone with healthy pillars of psychology we'll say i.e social aspects and whatnot and then bringing or reducing the stigma surrounding mental health that makes people feel bad for feeling bad if you suffer from depression or anxiety a lot of times because of the stigma that is all although is reducing is still surrounding mental health you may feel inferior about feeling the way you do and a lot of times you can't actually explain why you feel that way a lot of times you aren't sure a lot of times you don't really feel at the time you can help it but there are things that can be done be that psychological interventions even just starting small and just talking to people or talking to a person and kind of opening up from there those around you who you may initially have assumed might be quite judgmental may also be dealing with things themselves and the fact that you've now opened up about it and reduce or eliminated that stigma in your world has now encouraged them to do the same and reduce it in their world how do you stay motivated for uni and training? I train because I want to train. I love training, it's a key part of my life. It doesn't require mass motivation to do it because I just, I just love going to the gym, especially now I've pursued bodybuilding as like a training venture. My enjoyment for training since quitting powerlifting has shot up significantly. And especially since joining a new gym, which is the kind of environment I love to be in, surrounded by equipment that I, I wish I accessed earlier, all factors contributing to my training, be that environment and enjoyment are in a good place at the moment. So that covers that side of things. Uni side of things, at the end of the day, I have a goal. I want to achieve this master's. I'm doing this for myself and no one else. And that is motivation enough. I eat. why am I doing this? For personal reasons, crack on with it. It's just about time management. Finding motivation to do both. Sometimes you have to say like, this takes priority today. Other times you say, you know what, let's get both done. Favorite thing you've learned in psych, psychology? My favorite thing I've actually learned, I didn't learn through university, I learned that through external reading. So I spoke about Lost Connections, the book and the mental health video I did back in October and how he talked about the pillars of depression and one of those being lack of purpose and how he doesn't believe the author, Johan Hari, probably butchered his name, doesn't believe that medication is as effective for as many people as people claim. Not doubting that it is effective for some people, but are there better means of treatment to consider before pursuing medication for, for some people? Absolutely. Exposing myself to his book, especially in the earlier chapters, kind of opened my eyes to a lot of things and ultimately helped me come off medication, to be honest. So as I said in the mental health video, I was hammering a quite a lot of antipsychotic medication up until May 11th, I want to say, last year, so 2019. Hearing about what he said, about the kind of realities of it, gave me the push I needed to actually just say, you know what, cut everything out. So yeah, as a whole, I'd say that my favorite thing I've learned in psychology is just the pillars of depression and anxiety from his standpoint and how it opened my eyes to a new 
means of thinking. I love any advice on dealing with negative mental health during stressful times in uni. Talk to people, utilize your resources. So if you have access to DSA, speak to them, speak to the mentors if they give you access to them, speak to your tutor, speak to lecturers and just say, look, I'm struggling with this. Is there anything we can do to alleviate some of the pressure? I that may be submitting an ECF, nothing to be ashamed of. At the end of the day, it's in their interest for you to do well, it's in your interest for you to do well. If you need to take a time, a step back and say, you know what, this is just a bit much at the moment. I need a couple of weeks extra to get this assignment done because I'd rather submit it to a greater quality a bit later than submit it to a lesser quality when it's meant to be due. There's always a way around it, but I say the first step is just talking and understanding and admitting that, you know what, I am stressed and this is a bit of a crap time. How can people around me help and how can I help myself? Do you ever feel guilty for skipping training sessions for such adjusting what you were used to doing before school? Not as much as I used to. I rarely skip sessions. Like it's more of like if I'm injured or something's come up, then I'll skip a session. By the end of the day, you have to understand that missing one session will not change anything. Unless you're competing at extremely high level, it's not the end of the world. You miss a session, you will not regress. You will not get smaller, you will not get weaker. You will not lose movement patterns. You will not die, hopefully. It's an inconvenience and it's annoyance, but it's not something that's going to happen regularly. At the end of the day, it's what are your priorities? If you have an assignment due, it's either go to the gym or submit your assignment. The priority should be the assignment because you can catch up with the gym at a later date. Merge your sessions if you need to. Slightly longer session on this day, I will do an extra day elsewhere because you've had to skip a day. There are so many means of working around it. The worst case scenario, you miss a session, nothing bad will happen about that. Don't sweat about it. Don't beat yourself up. Understand that you've missed a session for a reason. You haven't done it for no reason. You haven't done it for no purpose. You've missed this because there is something else that requires greater priority in your life. And to achieve what you want to achieve, that must come first. So no, I don't really feel that guilty anymore. Whereas beforehand, I'd have a mentality where if I missed a session, it was the end of the world. I was a failure. You see all these people online, these influencers like, well, I haven't missed a session for 15 years probably a lie. I'll be interested to know the specifics of how you've been setting up your thesis. Do you write sections as the papers in and of themselves? The thesis is still in very early stages. I, at the moment, I'm still going through the proposal stage of things, i.e. submitting the proposals to get everything solidified before them pursuing the question or the research question that we would like to. For the proposal, we have to go through the lit review, the methodology and things like that. And I'm just going to do it bit by bit. We'll do the ethics one bit at a time. Then I'll go through the methodology. Then I'll choose the lit review. I'll just kind of just do significant section by significant section, see how many words are left over and fill in the gaps or how many words I need to cut out and remove where I see fit. When it actually gets to the official like thesis, the final dissertation, obviously I'll have to set aside the initial time for data collection and actually conducting the study itself and the experiment. Then I'll assess how I'm actually gonna set out, write it and PC it all together when I've de collected data. But we have like a Gantt chart, I've put together a Gantt chart with my partner, where we talk about this is what we want done by this date and this is the order we're gonna do it in. So that's it, that's the video. Hopefully a quick one, hopefully tolerable. Don't know how much training footage there is. Hopefully there's some. I do need to get better actually filming myself in the gym. I just get a bit cautious or worried that most of my sessions are very repetitive at the moment, although my blocks are changing as of next week, so that'll be a bit different. If you have any ideas of how you would like me to incorporate the student side of things into training, bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness in general, psychology, anything, let me know. Drop me a DM, drop a comment down below, anything. I appreciate your questions. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Holler back at your boy. Shout out Chris Jones. Bless. See you in a bit.